So hello Pat, could you give us a little bit of a background of the Baldwin ultraviolet lamp offering? The Baldwin lamps, ultraviolet lamps, actually originally started out as being Primark. And Primark was a UV lamp manufacturing company started in the UK in the early 1970s. And it grew quite rapidly, gaining a reputation for producing very high quality lamps and very short lead times. We now produce thousands of lamps every month. Here's a lamp with ceramic ends. This is the most common type that we would use. And it's, the body is made up of a quartz and there's electrical leads at the end. And we make these from short little ones, which, which are maybe an inch long, to 80 or 90 inches longer. It's not a problem. We also make lamps, and we're one of the few companies in the world that do this, for microwave applications. This is a lamp that, where there's no electrodes inside, and it goes into a microwave chamber, and when the microwaves hit the lamp, UV light comes out. We became part of Baldwin in uh, 2010, when Baldwin acquired Norton UV, which was the owner of Primark at the time. And we have a situation today where we're using the Baldwin organization around the world to help sell our lamps and to help to grow the business. And we, apart from supplying the very best lamps for our own equipment, and I'm talking about Baldwin equipment and AMS Spectral UV equipment, we also supply premium lamps for all of our competitors' products. What they find in the aftermarket is that our lamps are actually better than the original OEM lamps. There's also the fact that we can generally deliver quicker. We can make them in a day or two. Tell us how UV technology works. We have UV light produced inside a quartz tube. And when the lamp is running, obviously the UV light comes out. And the light is directed generally with reflectors or whatever onto a substrate or a material which you want to cure. And the light will react with something called photoinitiators, which are in the ink or in the coatings or whatever the material is. And these photoinitiators, they start off a chemical reaction. And in, in a fraction of a second, you go from something being a liquid to a solid. It's called cross-linking. And it's, it's pretty common, but you have to have a material that matches a lamp, and it works extremely well. And of course, the properties of the UV cured equipment or material is it can be extremely hard. It can be extremely tough. You can get excellent slip resistance, which is important sometimes for some production processes. And another area where UV is becoming more popular, particularly these days, is in the shortwave area, UVC. And UVC is a UV that actually destroys DNA. So it can be used to kill bacteria, spores, and of course viruses, which is a, a big word these days. That's very, very interesting. And what types of industries are particularly but valuable for UV technologies? The main industries are, and, and the biggest one to date, is probably printing. It's used an awful lot in offset, flexo, gravure printing, and becoming more and more popular as well with inkjet. So that, that's by far the biggest. There is also, and it's growing, an industrial market for UV. And typical examples would be uh, wood, coatings on wood to make floors extremely hard, like in gymnasiums or in boutiques. It can be put on film, it can be put on textiles. Uh, another popular area is metal coatings. It's used a lot today in automotives. It's also used an enormous amount in the electronics industry. Another area is germicidal and sterilization. This is a growing area. It's, it's used a lot for, uh, to kill bugs on surfaces or in air, in, in um, air conditioning systems, for example. So speaking of which, you mentioned that before. So we, we're now facing a global pandemic with COVID-19. So how has that affected your business? The first thing we did was we moved all of the sales team out of the building and got them all set up to work from home. In the production environment, we brought in a whole lot of the rules which everyone has become familiar with. We set up social distancing and we keep people two meters apart. We actually moved some of the equipment further apart to help keep people apart. We brought in hand sanitizer. Everybody has got face masks. We've managed to procure an enormous amount of these. And we have some critical suppliers that we use. And we made sure that we had supplies of everything we needed to keep our production going. And our germicide lamp sales are dramatically increased used in, in water and in food production and for surfaces, disinfecting and sterilization, it, it's, it's grown quite rapidly. But we've managed to meet all the demand. And it's all worked out great. And I must say I'm very, very proud of the teamwork that I've seen here and at our facility at Easton as well. So you're still matching their global needs that are existing today? We are. And actually, I believe that some of our customers may be stockpiling a little bit and we're actually meeting that need as well. Yeah. <laughs> which has been a bit of a challenge. I can imagine. So let's say that a customer needs to get in contact with you. I know that you've recently launched something brand new. Can you explain what that is? A new website has been launched, Primark.com, and we've introduced yet more contact methods for customers. There's an online chat system, contact forums, and we've also set up areas for customers to learn about UV. And we've also got something that I've got feedback already on, which has proven to be very useful, and that's a troubleshooting guide. 
Well, that's interesting to hear. So with that, I want to thank you, Pat, for what you've shared with us today and have a great day. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Christina.